Hello, I'm Dr. Sandal, founder of Optima Clinic. The modern medical system is falling apart. To fix it, we need to change how we think about health, illness, and the practice of medicine. Welcome to the show, Talking Shift, where we discuss radical new perspectives on health, illness, and the practice of medicine. Joining me again today is my good friend, Chad Richards, owner of Next Level Rising Thanks Personal for Training. Thanks Happy for to have me. you on. Yeah, it's been great. Today, we wanted to talk about men's health, and nobody better than Chad to, to really get into the weeds on this. Chad is a long-term student of Charles Poliquin, one of the, the original innovative thinkers about exercise physiology yes. and masculine health, and uh, I thought we could just shoot the breeze and kind of get into some, some quirky things about men's health. You know, there's a lot of marketing about men's health mm -hmm. but there's a lot of things that men can do to feel more vital to uh, have greater muscular gains libido confidence all these things that don't really take some magic pill but people don't get exposed to these ideas very much so i thought maybe we could kind of just float around the idea talk about testosterone uh, exercise physiology and just figure out what what, what we can give people yeah to walk absolutely. away with sounds great I love to do it. Cool. All right. Cool. So it's a, to start with, why don't we start off talking about the gym? Okay. You know this. This we're, we're gonna go right in your wheelhouse. Okay. Sounds good. Most men nowadays feel a lot of pressure to fit everything in. You know, it's like you got a kid, you got a job, you want to. Maybe you're 40. You want to hit the gym like you did when you were 25. It's like, oh, I'd like to do that. What, what is your advice to people who who want to increase their exercise? Who want to you know get away from the desk and mm -hmm. start to feel that robustness again? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think uh, I think we touched on this the last time we talked. It's it's really setting yourself up to have kind of preset your energy out there ahead of time, you know, mm. so um, getting your kind of your nutrition in place first, um, uh -huh. coming in and getting a checkup from your doctor, mm -hmm. getting some baseline levels, um, and then installing some of that recovery stuff almost inter immediately into your routine. Um, I think that's, those are the things that sustain you. Because um, as we change our stimulus, maybe we're doing higher reps this week or we're going lower reps the next week, whatever it is, or you got a week off. What's keeping everything kind of moving forward is how you're eating, how you're resting, um, just your sleep patterns, those types mm, of things. You yeah. Know? So kind of It's not just what you do at the gym. Yeah. That dictates those things absolutely and then you know dosage matters on the gym right like um, mm -hmm. we were talking about earlier if you're doing a 60-hour work week which you know thank god i don't do that anymore but if uh, when it's i hard. did or if i did yeah. um you've really got to put some credit into the bank when it comes to energy you know mm -hmm. what i mean it's almost like investing in the stock market and that you want to kind of get that ahead of accruing interest for you um, so that when you have to go into that, you you have enough available. So it's like you work 60 hours and then you have to do some self-care oh, so yeah. you can go to the gym. It's not Absolutely. like, okay, I'm, I work 60 hours, I'm run down, let me go to the gym. Mm -hmm. And you know, I remember being in that scenario in residency and, and you're limping along. Yes. You know, like, I like your point a lot. You have to have something to spend at the gym. Mm. It's like you're going shopping. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd like some bigger biceps. What do those cost? <laughs> it's like, well, you get eight hours of sleep. Did you eat 3,000 calories? <laughs> you're like, right. oh no, I didn't do it. And, and I like that point. It's like, if you, that's the first step. If you don't, if you have a mismatch in those, you can end up overworking at the gym and not getting what you expect out of it. Mm -hmm. And even if you are successful, let's say you're young enough, you can handle that. Eventually, you're going to go into some sort of adrenal fatigue. Mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. it's just kind of like it's going to catch up with you either way. So staying Tricky. ahead of it, I think, is is the important part, but the, and also the hard part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and I, you told me once you have to go down to go up. Yes, yeah. it's like you have to build that foundation before you're going to jump. You go down to go up, so you really get a spring out of it. That's right. That's right. I, I think, I think. Of course, everyone has health challenges nowadays. We live in a world that is full of novel challenges and chaos and distractions. And I mean, everything is shifting under our feet, it mm -hmm. seems like. Mm -hmm. And that's true for men and women, of course. I find 
that in medical practices, and I, I think the data on medical visits plays this out, women are much more likely to go to physicians mm -hmm. than men in mm -hmm. general. And, and I often kind of go, yeah, duh, because doctors don't have a lot to offer men in general. You know, in mainstream medicine, let's say that you or I go to a, a mainstream doc and we're like, hey, I want to look at my health. And the doc does a really dirt simple blood panel and they're like, everything looks normal. <laughs> like, how many times does that happen to people, right? And it's like, mm -hmm. see you in a year. Like, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to see you in a year. Like, what did I get out of that? Right, yeah. Maybe two or three. Right, maybe. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, and a lot of that is just a calibration issue. Mainstream mm -hmm. medicine in general is calibrated um, to fix you if you're falling over. Mm -hmm. It's not calibrated to optimization. Yeah. And similarly, you know, with all of the extra chaos in the world right now, people get stuck in this, this sort of reactionary thinking. And it happens at the gym too. People are like, oh, I'm kind of feeling fatigued and you know, I'm getting a little you know, more flab than I want. How do I change that? And it builds and it builds and it builds and it's a problem. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, let me go crazy at the gym. Like, you know, if they can get the energy together to do it, right? That's right. <laughs> And, and it's kind of like going to the doc, like most, most health issues, period, and this is certainly something I really recommend for men in general, you want to be ahead of things, right? Because maybe I'm stereotyping here a little too much, but it's true for me. I, I feel like a lot of men are a little more stubborn. Mm. They're like, I can just bear it. You know, yeah, I have a cranky knee or, you know, my energy's low. I don't feel like I did when I was 25. <clears throat> Go to work, right? There's a sort of grin and bear it attitude that mm, our society mm. really, really pushes to men. And I think that's cool in one sense. I think it's cool that men can put up with that. They've got the, the grip for it, right? And of course there are some women that can too. But our society really pushes that on men. I would love to see that balanced out more. It's like, mm -hmm. I love that people have the capacity for that grit. And also, I don't want them to expend grit when they don't have to. Like, can we be more preventative? Can we get out in front of these things for people? Yeah, let's be efficient. Yeah, let's be efficient, right, exactly right. There's that old adage that a uh, ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. <laughs> and, and for men's health, going from 20s into mm. 30s into 40s, definitely at the top of my list on things to do are exactly what you were talking about. You know, how do we stay active at the same level we did when we were 25? Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah, that takes hitting the gym for sure, right? We have to stay maintaining that thing, mm -hmm. but we also can't let everything, the floor drop out from underneath us on that too, right? Just like you were saying. Exactly. Absolutely. You know, um, you know I was blessed by being able to train a, a professional basketball player in my early training days. Cool. Um, and, you know, former KU great Jock Vaughn, and I was um, lucky enough to train him seven of the 12 years he was in the NBA. Cool. And um, so for me to be able to, to get a chance to do that, what I noticed about him is his intricate professionalism when it came to his rest. Mm, you know, uh, before people he, don't think about that. Yeah, before he came to work out with me, which would usually be a 10 or 11, he'd already got his shots in. Mm -hmm. So he got his shots up, he'd come in, work out, but then immediately after, with a shaking hand, he'd be heading to get a massage or some ART or mm. he had a sauna built in his house. Cool. So, you know, like if you were an MMA fighter nowadays, same thing. You're going to have to install all these recovery methods in between those two to three workouts you're doing a day. And I think that's just based on necessity. That's part of the job. Right. And, uh -huh. and we just don't take that same approach to it because we are, you know, it's kind of a back burner thing, you know, my... My workout's right. a back burner thing. My nutrition's a back burner thing. Work is what I focus on. But if you want the energy for that work, mm -hmm. and, which means the performance at work, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. need to get it. Right, yeah. That. You have to preset that, you know. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah the, again, it's that sort of reactionism. It's like, you know, I want to feel like I did when I was 25, and I'm really busy, and I'm swamped, and I'm... And it, and that's a vicious cycle mm -hmm. because if someone is maintaining their gym habits and their self-care to let them go to the gym, I love how you said that they have more for their work. And so they're more effective at their work. Their work taxes them less. They're less stressed. And that's a positive reinforcement cycle. Mm -hmm. We just have a better mindset being there, you know, with, with energy at hand versus... You know, relying on a cup of coffee or tea. Uh, yeah, or, to get or five. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I gotta keep going. That's right. Yeah. 
Uh, that, that's interesting. So if someone uh, is, is stuck at a desk and they're 40 years old and they're like, mm. oh gosh, well, you know, where did I go wrong? How did I end up down this line? Mm. Uh, what is your advice? How do they start to turn that back around? Let's say they've got a couple of kids, they're mm. working you know, a, a nice, pleasant desk job, but it's you know, 40, 50 hours a week, mm. they're tired. They're not uh, feeling as fit as they used to. They're kind of like, oh, I got a little bit of a belly. You know, how do I, what do they do to start to turn that around? Yeah, um, well, following what we just said about, you know, maybe getting the nutrition down, getting a baseline from your doc, just so you know you're making progress, right? I think when it comes to men, we need to appeal to the logic of, hey, I'm making progress here. Mm -hmm. So you gotta, get, yeah. you gotta get those markers. Um, but maybe come and see a you know, personal trainer or mm -hmm. physical therapist if, if they need to go that far, but to get some structural balance, you know, and to make that a 10, 15 minute workout three times a week. Just, that's, that's not that much of an investment, but yeah. it can seem daunting. Yeah, absolutely. And some of that is like, it's not really exercise, it's just mobility stuff, stretching the hips, stretching mm. the ankles, getting some thoracic mobility. Uh -huh. um, doing some of that stuff can make you feel better and then kind of give you the room to maybe attempt a, a time or two at the gym. I and, like that. You know. The idea of it not being all or nothing. Like, right. like yeah. let me build up enough oomph and you know, I'm dissatisfied enough. That, okay, I'm gonna make a New Year's resolution and I'm gonna do it. It's like, mm -hmm. I, I'm with you on that. It makes more sense to be like, okay, well, can we just start to slow roll this and yeah. add 10 minutes a day of, of self-care? Yeah, and it could be a home office type uh -huh. workout, right? You're doing bridges and bird dogs and stretching your hips. That's uh, a great point. I do think that our culture for some reason or another is really oriented on weights. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, you can have a, a very, very good workout with body weights. Yeah. You know, jamming out some push-ups, some air squats, doing a plank. I mean, there's lots and lots of body weight exercises that for anyone who's spending time at a desk is like way up here. Like, oh man, <sighs> yeah. it's hard, you know, just with those. Yeah. And that takes out uh, a lot of logistics. Mm -hmm. You don't have to find a gym and, oh, do I fit in or... Right. It's a yeah. good place to start. Absolutely. And people forget that, you know, just body weight is weights. I mean, it's yeah. it's gravity. Nine, I don't know, 9.8 meters squared, something like that is what's mm -hmm. coming down on mm -hmm. you all the time. So um, just pitching yourself. And if this was my, my, my little guy here with his uh -huh. face pointing towards you, you know, just pitching yourself against gravity this way. Uh -huh. And gravity's acting upon you this way. Yeah. Is forcing that cylinder to deal with gravity in a very inefficient way. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Why we, why we evolved out of that situation, right? And then get back to here and everything seems easier. So, you know, I think that's the... That's what we try to do in the beginning is kind of, sorry, go back to my little model here. Uh, <laughs> we need like a little like, professional little man. I, I have one of kal -El's characters in there so I can do that. Yeah, but, <laughs> but it's literally like kind of treating someone like rotisserie in a way. Uh -huh. And if you look at- Making uh, them fight gravity. Yeah, and we're just kind of rotating the marshmallow if you will, mm -hmm. and, and browning up mm -hmm. the flame is gravity <laughs> in this case, right? Um, if you look at Stuart McGill, um, the back specialist, and uh -huh. that's really what he's doing. He's putting you in the bird dog that's face down side planks there as well there's the side and then he has you do something called a modified curl up which mm. is on your back with a little bit of tension into the oh you show me that one yeah 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 so um, it's amazing yeah. how challenging those things can be again i think a lot of working out isn't thought about carefully it's like we have this cultural idea uh, of of arnie and Arnie's throwing around the big weights. But the reality yeah. is that Arnie is almost a sort of philosopher in how he does that. It, it's not the thing that you see, it's the way that he thinks that yeah. makes such a big difference. That's true. And you can you can get those challenges and that stimulus to the muscles and the nervous system to build strength and, and bulk, leanness without weights. Mm -hmm. you know, people are like, oh, he's throwing around the weights, let me do that. Mm -hmm. But much more important is that mind-muscle connection mm -hmm. right. to go, okay, my body has this limitation and it has this ability and I'm connecting with it and, and you know, like, just a, uh, a shout out to Chad, you know, obviously I'm biased, Chad is my trainer, so I think very highly of him. Uh, we were working out the other day and we were going through a round of lighter weights and it's 
slow and perfect and mind muscle connection mm. and it's amazing the positive benefit that that has for someone who isn't already like really in the habit it's like it's a great place to start you don't need giant weights we don't need that uh that cultural concept of the gym mm -hmm. just just work slow uh burn the marshmallow brown the marshmallow yeah. like there's lots of ways to do it absolutely yeah and i mean i think those baseline exercises that may get you through a vacation week because you're not uh -huh. at the gym or or you're a little not feeling great and you want to kind of just get that baseline those are the the presets before those big weights so yeah, you, yeah, you know, yeah 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 you skip those you're going to end up having to do them in physical therapy or something <laughs> later. So you might yeah. as well just get get ahead of it and, and i think people kind of fear the early exercises the body weight the prep work mm -hmm. because they're so excited to get to the big cool things which is like great but i think people are usually stunned at how how good it can feel to slow and steadily work the beginner stuff and then yeah by the time you're like okay i'm i'm actually legitimately bored with these can we start tossing something around like oh wow that feels great yes. instead of just leapfrogging this and like oh it feels a little oh it never feels stable i'm not sure i'm doing it right i'm not sure that feels good mm -hmm. but if you do this it's like this is dessert this feels awesome exactly when i train a lot of older folks now you know i say most of my clientele is 60 to 80. uh-huh um, that'd be kind of the, the bell curve there it's awesome and it seems to be more managing injury Mm -hmm. than it is building avoiding building. right yeah and we are still trying to stimulate the nervous system which you know integrates with the muscular system and gives us that energy we're looking for but at what cost so uh -huh. we got to make sure we take the right um the right chances if you will uh-huh you know i nice. think of myself as a financial advisor in a way i'm <laughs> like putting together your portfolio I'm an atp sure. advisor yeah. invest here yeah exactly because if if you if you guess wrong you yeah, get hurt yeah. and then if you get hurt you can't train right and right so, you know, oftentimes, when I have men come to me and they're like, hey doc, I've got these goals. And I'm like, great, first of all, so happy you're here with someone who can help you optimize, right? Integrative medicine and functional medicine is calibrated towards optimization. So like, I'm so happy to have men comfortable and feeling like there is something they can do preventatively, you know, in mm. proactively, right? So they mm. come in and I was like, yeah, this is great. There's so many different things we can do to look at their deep biochemistry, their genetics to try and fill in nutrient gaps and be precise. And then they're like, okay, doc, you know, we've been working together for, for three months, six months. I'm feeling really, really good. I want to hit the gym again. One of the things I find myself frequently telling people is go find a good personal trainer. Because if you find a good personal trainer, it's simply going to be efficient. And it's exactly for all the reasons you're talking about there. Mm -hmm. It's like, I've done all this work to get you in really good biochemical condition. Mm -hmm. Bring your mindset to the right place. I love that. And unless you have a history of doing a bunch of weights at the gym, you're an athlete in the past, and you kind of know it, and, and you can be patient with yourself to build back into that, mm -hmm. you're going to get way more bang for your buck time-wise and heck, money-wise, injury-wise, by going to a pro like yourself, and you're like, okay, cool, let's look at all the biomechanics, let's be meticulous about this, okay, there's a little deficit there. Don't go into the full bench press, let's do the unilateral work and fix that. Mm -hmm. And that's just, like, the payoff is so dramatic for that. And, you know, I, I don't like people to feel like they need a bunch of different practitioners to do something, mm -hmm. but there are some, some areas where I'm like, that's just efficient. Mm -hmm. Like if people will come and do that sort of intensive work up front to set themselves up, right? Whether that's sort of biochemistry and all, you know, testosterone levels and all that cool stuff. Like, yeah, you invested a lot into that. Why don't you carry that on? Uh, at, at least go check out how it feels to work with a trainer. At least let them, help you chart a course. Absolutely, yeah. Other than being demoralized at the gym or God forbid they pull something and it's like, ah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will just come get an outline. You know, we'll do uh -huh. uh, something called a functional movement screen. So we just make you do a body weight squat, um, a body weight lunge, some range of motion type stuff and then get to see how your muscles are moving and then just yeah. give you some kind of counterbalancing routines to get you started. So, And then come back every four to six weeks and get a new one. You know, get something to work off of. Something that I think is really cool about personal training, and there's an analogy to, to good medicine here, is, is feedback. 
in the sense of like biofeedback and right. you know, mm. are things the way that I think they are? Mm. And I can say, hey, you know, I think I have a good relationship with sugar, and then I can get a lab test and say yeah, that's true or not true. Right. right. Like, okay, now I have power over that. I can play with that. Mm -hmm. Coming to a personal trainer, I think I'm moving a certain way. Mm -hmm. But if I have an independent of set of eyes, it's like, well, hang on, your back isn't straight with that. Well, hold up, you're going to hurt yourself. Right. You know, and it's very valuable to either film yourself to have that sort of external set of eyes, or better yet, have a professional who can kind of watch that and go, mm, okay, hang on, we got to remediate that before you get into that more. Mm -hmm. It's like when we're doing an exercise and, and uh, a trainer is tapping on a muscle group, like, you want to feel it here, like, mm -hmm. what? There, oh, well, oh, whoa, oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. It takes that sort of um, external expertise a lot of times to, to make things click. Yeah, well, I think we've kind of, we get lumped into kind of like the luxury group as personal trainers, you know, but, mm. but every athlete, uh -huh. and especially on the highest level, has a coach. And it's for right. that reason that like what you were saying is getting that third eye perspective and just like, hey, this is what you're doing. I know it feels like you're doing this, but you're really doing this. So. You're right, right. Yeah. It, it's very sneaky because our nervous system, we develop habits neurologically. Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh, I want to bend over at 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. And our body says, I bent over at 90 degrees. But that may be a false message. It's mm. incredibly common. And so it's like, no, that was, that was like... 70 degrees and then you bent in your lumbar spine and like you're gonna hurt yourself I'm like oh, i'm bending at 90 degrees like well, take a picture yeah you know, it, what happened exactly our nervous system can trick us it's well and that's tricky. happened with us too like I, I mean i'm telling you and we're like okay let me just film it and that'll help you. yeah yeah right. and it's awesome yeah what a great tool i i would love it you know for men's health one of the big shifts we need is we need for people to not see it as optional, mm -hmm. right? Like you said, people think about personal training as a luxury service. Yes. It's like, this is not expensive in the scheme of health and longevity. Having a personal trainer, mm -hmm. having uh, good biofeedback by looking at testosterone levels and those sort of things, uh, it, it would be nice if as a society we encouraged men and reminded them, you can and should feel good, mm -hmm. right? There's too much grin and bear it. Yes. And again, I love that people can do that, right? It's yeah. like, I want people to have grit, but at the same time, it's like, save that for when you need it. That's right. You know, like, let's get you to a place where you feel great all the time. And that shouldn't be a luxury. Mm -hmm. That's crap, you know, to be like, feeling good's a luxury, like, you know, and let, let's, <clears throat> let's shift that. Yeah, life is time and quality of time. Yeah. Right? That's that's what matters most. When we started working out early on, you were like, okay, my goal for you, Neela, is for you to be able to toss your kids in the air without worrying about it. Yeah. And you know, now that I my kids are getting older, I'm like, that was great. <laughs> you know, the, the, the fact that I've been able to just toss them up in the air without pulling my darn back or something is like, it's golden. Absolutely. You know? I only have that seven years with my eldest. She's seven now, and it's like, that's awesome exactly and that's not a luxury you know it is and I'm, so I'm, I'm glad that somehow or another it kind of happened that I got into you know being more proactive yeah I mean it was you getting strong enough but then also the practice of like learning a bracing sequence and just kind right. of having all that stuff installed right it's part of getting strong is preempting that bracing sequence building the yeah. pattern and yeah. yeah 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 you have a practice of yeah. this is how I so I breathe or don't breathe when I'm doing something. <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, good. So any, any other takeaways we should give to the listeners? If you're a man who is uh, 40 years old, you're at a desk, things aren't perfect, um, getting your, your health optimized, seeing that as a priority, mm -hmm. um, going to a physician who can, who's actually calibrated to healthcare optimization, mm -hmm. Right, looking at testosterone levels, but not just testosterone levels, looking at the nutrients that give that yourself. You don't want to just rely on an injectable testosterone. I know that's becoming somewhat trendy and popular. Why aren't you producing the testosterone? What's going on with your glands? How you can fix that? Absolutely. And having um, connections with, with exercise, mm -hmm. healthy connections with exercise, not boom bust. And someone like yourself is a great resource to chart that course for someone. What other, what other golden tidbits are there for men's health? Mm -hmm. um, 
I think I think to also find some sort of um, yin satisfaction. Going back to our our last conversation, right? About the yin, yin and yin. the yang. Yeah, like finding activities that kind of give you that psyched feeling that you get mm. from the gym, but to be able to find that in a in a yin place. Like again, for me, it's archery. Uh huh. Um, it might be gardening, or I know that doesn't sound like it, but um, yeah, I mean, but yeah, to- be, totally. Be, Some people are just. Yeah, it could be walking or even just, you know, being a long distance bike rider or hiker or whatever uh-huh. it is, but like having that side of it to, to pull you that direction in case you aren't feeling great or you're, mm-hmm. again, you're off on vacation, and, but you want to keep that all moving, you know, so um, I think. Is that the same as saying flow state? Yes. Is that what, it's like have something that gets you in that. Yeah, kind of gets you in that zone. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good, good. Well, it's exciting. Yeah. I mean, we could definitely talk for two hours about men's health. There's so much to be said about it. It's half the darn species. Yeah. Uh, but, but if people can take away from this the, the shift that men should push for optimized health. And there are easy steps for this. Going to a physician who focuses on optimization rather than the sort of rote mainstream medicine, like that didn't offer me anything. Yeah having a healthy connection with exercise and leaning into a personal trainer who can chart your course is a really, really good way to do that. And I love that, you know, how do you have that energy buildup, that flow state, that extra yin, that going down before you go up? Mm -hmm. Let's all of this create spaciousness so that even though we're tired and working and taking care of kids and stuff, it's still like, Okay, I've got some energy to to spend on myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to give back to yourself so you can give it to everyone else. I love that. Yeah, perfect. Chad Richards with Next Level. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.